Hello, my name is Marisol Rodriguez and I'm a fire captain with the Ventura County Fire Department and this is my good friend Nate. One of the questions that we get asked all the time is about our firefighting gear and what it does for us and how it protects us. It protects us in two ways. Nate is going to demonstrate it for us. <laughs> you can see that it has two layers. There's an outside layer that protects us from the fire, the flash, and there's an inside layer right here that protects us from the heat, the temperature. This is our hood and it protects our head and our neck from the fire, make sure that it's covered. You can see that our boots and our turnout pants are connected with some suspenders. The reason it looks like this is so that when we get a call, we can get out of the station as quickly as possible. One minute or less is our goal. This is our turnout jacket. You can see the two layers. And that protects our shoulders, our arms, and our chest from the fire. You can see that we have our gloves here which are attached, and we also have a flashlight, and that's so that when we're searching the house to look for you, we can find you easier. One of the things that's really important is to make sure that everything is zipped and snapped. It's so important, in fact, that before we go into your house to look for you, we check each other to make sure that it's all done upright. This is our breathing apparatus, and this tank that's on the back side of it is full of air. The reason it's full of air is when he hooks into our breathing apparatus, it protects our lungs so that we can go into the fire, look for you wherever you are, and make sure that we help you get out safely. This is our face mask, and the face mask helps us to see so that when we're in the smoke in the fire, we can find you easier. This hole right here is where he'll hook up to his air. You can see that we make sure that it's all the way covered around the mask to protect our entire head. This is our helmet, which protects our head from any falling debris. When we go inside to look for you, we'll be crawling around on our hands and knees. And you can see that Nate is not scary. Here's the bottle, it has air inside. <laughs> he's gonna hook up to his mask really quick and you're gonna see that he sounds a little bit like Darth Vader. But one of the things that we want you to remember is that Nate isn't scary. That's just what it sounds like when we're on air. So if you see Nate crawling around and looking for you, make sure that you come out and help us find you, okay? That's really important. These are our gloves and they protect our hands from any kind of heat. So Nate's not scary, is he? Don't be scared, it's just me, Nate. Hey guys, do you wanna see Nate take off his gear? Wow, that was fast. And you can see that Nate is not scary. He's just your friendly neighborhood firefighter to the rescue. Speaking of rescue, I would like to introduce you to my friend, Captain Zan Ziegler and firefighter Robbie. And they're gonna share with you some really great ideas on what you can do to create and practice an escape plan for your home. Nice work, Robbie. But would you know what to do if this fire was in your house? No, let me show you. It's not uncommon for a fire to start in the middle of the night when the household is asleep. Being awoken suddenly by a loud alarm can leave you confused and disoriented. Creating and practicing an escape plan will help keep your family safe during a fire. Come on, Robbie. Remember, you've got to stay low and go to stay under the smoke. When making your escape plan, remember to include two ways out of every room in your home. Robbie, remember, stay low and go. Once you get out, stay out and go directly to your designated meeting area. Way to go, Robbie. You've created an escape plan. Yeah! Thanks, Dan and Robbie. You can find some more great information at our website about escape plans at vcfd.org. When it comes to being safe in the home, the kitchen is one of the most important places to think about. Now here's the guy who learned some very important lessons about fire safety in the kitchen. Excuse me, Dan, but you should be alert when you are cooking and keep anything that can catch fire away from the stovetop. <laughs> Good. 
Good job, Dan. It's second and ten at the 42nd yard line. Kettleman takes the snap. He passes it to Kuzinski. And it looks like Kuzinski is going to go all the way. He's at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. Oh, and he's tackled at the five-yard line. We have time for a quick commercial break, and we're back. Kettleman takes out the Always stay in the kitchen when you're frying, grilling, or broiling food. Mm. And coming around the final turn, it's for That's great, ahead. Dan. Now, stay safe. Life isn't a cartoon. Cooking is the leading cause of home fires. Don't be a doofus. Learn more about preventing home fires at nfpa.org. That's some really good information. And remember, the most important thing you can do if there's a fire in your house is to get out, get away from your house, and call 911. And firefighters will be there as soon as we can. Remember to stay safe out there. And at home. Thank you for watching.